Welcome everyone to Talking Telecom with Dell. Today's topic is on distributed user plane functions. My name is Christina Perfetto. I am a product marketing manager for the telecom systems business within Dell Technologies. Today, I'm joined by Gaurav, who is also from Dell Technologies. Gaurav, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? Sure, Christina. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Gaurav Gangwal, and I'm a technical product manager for the telecom system business unit with Dell Technologies. So, Gaurav, um, 5G networks are bringing new opportunities uh, around user plane functions, specifically around distribution. What can you tell us about this? Sure. Uh, but before exploring the concept of distributing user plane functions, let's revisit the era of 4G EPC, uh, which had a flat and a centralized architecture uh, with the main packet core components typically being deployed in a centralized manner, which was limited to a few select locations within the overall network topology of, of an operator, right? So this centralized architecture allowed for efficient management and control, but it also resulted in higher latencies due to the longer distances the data had to travel from the user equipment to the centralized nodes. Uh, now, in release 14, 3GPP introduced the control and user plane separation CUPS architecture. Now, which was a which was significant enhancement to the legacy EPC architecture, which separated the control plane and the user plane functions of your serving and the PDN gateway. However, uh, in in the context of EPC, this separation was still you know was was partial. Now, uh, 5G on the other hand, truly enhanced this separation by adopting a service-based and distributed architecture. Uh, this new architecture provides more flexibility in deploying low latency services in a local data center while still maintaining your centralized control plane function. In fact, uh, 3GPP release 15 introduced all the necessary features for user plane distribution, such as providing you know, multiple IP anchor points for UE's mobility, uh, with the provision of inserting an intermediate UPF uh, or doing UPF chaining, etc. So what exactly does it mean to distribute user plane functions? Like what are some of the use cases and benefits of this approach? Okay, now we have now, now we know the background story, um, you know, with the comparison of 4G PC versus what has changed in 5G. So so, 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 so a distributed user plane function or a DUPF is a network architecture that actually distributes the user plane or your data plane or your packet gateway to the network edge or basically closer to the end user where the data is actually consumed. So this allows packet processing uh, and traffic aggregation to be performed closer to the network edge. This makes things faster and more efficient because data doesn't have to travel as far. It's it's like having a mini post office in your neighborhood instead of having to go to the main post office in the city center. This way, the letters, right, in or in our case, the data can get to you faster and more efficiently. Now, um, if I talk about the use cases and benefits, first, it can help operators enable new services for customers. Uh, which requires low latency and high data bandwidth, just like AR, VR applications, uh, real-time gaming, etc. Uh, second, distributed UPF can enable local breakouts, which which is a method um, to basically route your data traffic from your user equipment uh, directly to the internet without going through the operator's core network. Uh, this approach actually reduces latency, improves speed, and also prevents your sensitive data from being intercepted in more central areas of the network. Third one I can think of is, uh, could be uh, content caching for local data processing, which can help reduce deployment cost of transporting packet from your access network to the, to the UPF, which is sitting somewhere in your centralized data center. And this also decreases, decreased uh, decreases the network traffic on the backhaul of your network, overall resulting in better TCO for the 
for the csp uh, last but not the least uh, it it offers a network wide mobility to the to the customers right so think of it like if you if you do you do mobility the the user equipment or the or or, or the user moves from uh, to a new ran uh, serving area or to a new ran node and the new ran node cannot support the n3 tunnel to the old uh, psa or the session anchor upf sitting in the centralized location then an intermediate upf also known as iupf can be inserted and that iupf will have the n3 tunnel towards your uh, radio access network and a new n9 interface towards your psa upf sitting in the centralized location so this process of you know linking upf is called upf chaining now this involves directing the data traffic or data flows from a series of upf and each of these upf uh, performs specific function but ultimately it results in the network wide mobility for the for the ue so i i loved your analogy and i think you know the, the benefits of moving to a distributed approach they seem pretty clear but you know, what are some of the challenges that operators may face as they transform how they operate and adopt this new approach? Mm -hmm. So, from if from the challenges perspective, right, I can I can think of three major challenges. Uh, challenges related related to your resources, the constraints of the resources, uh, higher deployment, and the operating costs. And the third one could be about you know how do you save money, right? So, first one. Uh, resource constraints. Um, so edge or remote locations often have, uh, you know, limited physical space available for deploying network equipment. The challenge actually lies in accommodating that necessary hardware, uh, you know, the cooling system and the other infrastructure within these space constrained environments. Now, remote location or the edge location may also have limited or unreliable power supply infrastructure. So ultimately, opting for an infrastructure with optimal power efficiency, high density, or you know, easy serviceability, ruggedized exterior, you know, which is optimized edge form factors becomes important as the UPS are extended to the edge. Uh, next, as I said, uh, higher deployment and operating costs are another significant factor. So the 5G edge user plane is intended to achieve a high volume of deployment and level of distribution. So the total number of edge locations combined with the degraded accessibility make them more expensive to build and maintain. So to keep deployment at the network edge from being too expensive, uh, operators require pre-integrated solutions and automation and the lifecycle management capabilities. Uh, the last point is about you know saving money when when you are running all of your core network functions from a centralized data center, you can save costs by sharing power, internet, and cooling. This means uh, it's important to cut cost where we can, like you know choosing containerized platform instead of uh, VM-based ones. Also choosing a horizontal telco cloud platform that can support multiple workloads like like choosing a horizontal cloud platform where you can deploy upf and to save resources you can deploy cudu or maybe cdn on the same edge cloud right and 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 provides the capability to expand and scale the compute and the storage resources to accommodate the varying demands that you might have at the edge is is a must right um, so, uh, out of curiosity, then you know, how can Dell help operators address these challenges? Okay, yeah. So Dell offers Dell Telecom infrastructure blocks. Uh, so these are engineered solutions, basically designed to streamline design, uh, configuration, management of your telco cloud infrastructure from your day zero deployment through your day two lifecycle management and beyond. Right. Uh, Providing a cloud native solution with automated deployment and lifecycle management at its core. Uh, when it comes to, to the distributing UPS, infrastructure blocks for Red Hat provide uh, an engineered horizontal cloud stack platform, um, 
helping operators to break down the technology silos and empowering them to actually deploy a common cloud platform from their core functions to edge to ran and that 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 allows operator to basically pool resources to meet uh, the changing workloads requirements uh now again with with, with infra blocks we offer uh xr8 thousand series servers which are designed to be compact and modular making them ideal for for any telecom edge settings right so they are modular design with the options to choose from 1u to 2u sledge option with uh, you know up to four nodes uh, in a single chassis makes it possible to run multiple workloads uh, you know cu du and upf in the same chassis so ultimately you are you are uh, pooling and and saving on the resources right uh, again um, another benefit of xr8000 sled based architecture is that it simplifies your operations across the distributed network uh, it is it's designed for easy serviceability with front input output power uh, the compute sled are based on intel uh, fourth generation xeon scalable processors offering up to 32 cores uh with the support for both uh, sapphire rapids and um edge and as ee intel vran boost processors uh so this is this is for the you know the, for the for the hardware but when it comes to managing the life cycle of the whole telco cloud infrastructure stack right infrastructure blocks uh come with dell telecom infrastructure automation software and red hat uh, uh advanced cluster management software included these software automates the deployment and the life cycle management of the telco cloud stack uh from your hardware till your cash layer where your upf and all your network functions are ultimately going to run uh last uh, is is all of this is backed by a unified support model from dell uh with options that meet carrier grade slas uh so providers don't have to worry about you know the multi vendor management for your cloud infrastructure support basically you know you're covered for the hardware and the software and everything as dell becomes the single point of contact uh in the support of the telco cloud platform and work with its part with its partners in the background to resolve the issue thank you gurav these really are truly exciting times for the telecom transformation And for those of you watching, if you want to learn more about Dell Technologies and our solutions for telecom, please visit or check out our website. We have other YouTube videos, and you can visit us at www.dell.com/telecom. Thank you. Thank you.